All right, we got all of her clothes off. She's almost naked. Uh, these little Phillips screwdriver boats here, boy, they jokers was hard to take off. Now I'm gonna just uh, take that off, and I'll get back with you. You can see outside there how all snowing. It's warmer in here than it is out there. Don't have a lot of room to wiggle around to put the parts, but uh, I'm just taking pictures and placing the boats with the tins, things of that nature. So we'll get back with you here in a minute. You got a uh, two inches, 935 thousandths on the cylinder. We had to move the operations outside. Life was like too many parts floating around, too many fumes in the air. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, what are you doing there? All right, what, am I, what I'm doing now, I checked it one way. I want to check it the other way and make sure we're not egg shaped. The wear in the cylinder. And it's just a telesc telescoping gauge and then a digital caliper. Actually, uh, works better with micrometers, but I didn't have those available. Oh man, you're right on. Two inches, nine hundred thirty-four thousandths that way. So you're out a thousandth, which can have been a shake of my hand or something. So no problem there. You're not egg-shaped at all. All right. So now we got our that. We'll have to tear it down a little bit further and do some more measurements. All right. Yeah, I had to bring it out here in the Civil War tent. It's a 10 by 12. It's like, what, 28 degrees outside and probably, I don't know what it is in here. It's comfortable in here because of the wind is not blowing. All right, little buddy, what do we got going on now? Uh, I guess the next thing is we'll just start tearing down and... Because uh, I'm playing dumb see what else we gotta work on <laughs> but uh now when you take your connection rod off it's a good idea to mark like take you a little punch or something and make you a mark on each side to make sure you get it back right everything lines up back right yeah and uh depending on how far you want to go i don't know if you want to totally rebuild it or uh just replace a few parts, but might as well since it's we're down this far. Yeah. Well, right here's our little little hoe for oil to go through. That's always going to the front of your engine. 
the yeah. bottom. Is that what you was talking about? And then, well, I always make a mark on the rod cap. Yeah. And then on the connecting rod, and that way I know it lines up. Unless you get a, you were gonna buy a new connecting rod, and then. Well, yeah, well, that that would come with the rebuild kit. Right. So, in that case, you wouldn't have to worry so much about it. Okay. Now here's a question. I don't know because I've never had to buy nothing like this. The new dipper and the whole enchilada, is it going to have a little hoe or is it going to be solid? And if it's solid, can I use this one? Probably. Um, sometimes if they, they'll they remanufacture something and they'll come out with a little new different design. So right. It depends on if that's been re-engineered or if you get an original factory rebuild kit. But more than likely it'll come out looking like this. Okay. All right. So we are dead on. Yeah, your cylinder's pretty good. It's it's not egg shaped, and we're we're pretty close. Okay. So now, what's the size piston I'm needing? Oh well, now the piston size will be a little bit different. Um, that's each set of rings will have its own take up. How much it'll uh, it's allowed to have a gap. So uh, we'll have to figure out your actual piston size when we get it out, and then we'll have to figure out what's available to make sure we can you know close up that gap and it's not too big alrighty well we'll see you when the pistons are out alright hmm yeah okay you got a little bit of scarring on your Rock cap. You got a rag. Right. Yeah, there's a little bit of wear there. Ew, check you out. And you got a few markings on your your crankshaft. But you can't feel them. They're not really bad. But we'll definitely have to measure it and see what our wear looks like. Okay. Um, got the piston out. It does have a little bit of wear on it. I got a lot of scratches on the the uh, piston head. Your wrist pin seems to be in pretty good shape. There's not just a lot of slop there. But if you're going to replace all this, you might as well do it all. Um, and your rings, if you look real close at your rings, there's not a lot of scarring on them. So your rings aren't too bad, but they're weak. They've lost a lot of their spring tension. I shouldn't be able to push that in quite so easily. So uh, you've, you've lost some of your, which is normal over time. I mean, you're talking about a 50-year-old motor that's that I can tell has never been rebuilt because there's no stamps on your piston so it's never been bored and that's a good sign for us in case we do have to bore it out a little bit to true up the cylinder we've got space to do that so you're in good shape with that but uh... yeah you're you're showing some signs of wear definitely I don't know if we're going to be able to get there from here. Uh -oh. Two inches, nine hundred and twenty. Two inches, nine hundred twenty. This way. Let's look at it this way. Good old rusty Allen Allen screws.
There's one set screw out. Got another one to go. I'm gonna just pull this pulley off and then pull our crankshaft out.